Hi, this is Ushio, and today we're going to talk about Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind by Hayao Miyazaki. And it's huge, and it's heavy, it's a complete box set, it's everything. And I'm going to put this down, and I'm going to pick up the paperback, because it's much easier to flap around because it's skinny and light. But honestly, what have I been doing with my life? I haven't read this, it's been out basically always. And I've only just read it now and it's so good. <laughs> so you're probably well aware on who Hayao Miyazaki is and what Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind is because you probably watched the anime and the anime is fine but essentially I actually watched this in the middle of reading the manga because it's a big manga and the anime movie it's it's a guided tour of what the manga is. It kind of hits on a couple of the main points but it's it's just a light friendly two hour tour. The manga is the real deal. I'm, I'm gonna take this thing out because it's it's like huge and you can kind of see how it works. Oh there's also there's also a poster in here that you can pin up if you want. I'm just gonna rest it on my shoulder because it's heavy. So Nazika's our hero, she lives in the Valley of the Wind, you know as the title says, and she's a bit of a botanist. She's got like a, an affinity for nature, trees, and she kind of understands how things work. The world is beyond post-apocalyptic. It is completely destroyed. There is nothing left. And um, humans are basically living on the outskirts of these poisonous forests. So she's the daughter of a king in this small kingdom. And they're kind of minding their own business. They're just doing their everyday life kind of thing. And suddenly this big cruiser, because there's a lot of flying in this series. You know Miyazaki likes his flying. But yeah, this big cruiser just comes in, crashes, burns, and everything is bad. And everything just starts to fall apart from there. Inside this ship is a, a young girl who's got a piece of a, a mystery item, but there are bad people after it. And so now as a car, she kind of takes this thing and suddenly another army is invading her kingdom. I can't be bothered to hold the manga up anymore. It's, it's too heavy and it's distracting me from what I'm trying to say. So I'm just going to put an image here and hopefully that will be okay. Please forgive me for that. So a kingdom's been invaded and they're after this mystery item and the mystery item is basically a piece to an ultimate weapon and there are kingdoms all over the place. The film, the anime movie, only really deals with like two different kingdoms. So you've got Nausicaa's kingdom and then you've got the Tauromachians. In the, in the manga it's a lot more fleshed out, there's a lot more going and you've got the Tauromachians, you've got your Doroks, you've got the worm handlers, you've got Nausicaa's lot, you've got the tree people, whoever they are. <laughs> And it's just, it's just a lot more thought out. It's a huge expansive world and you do get to see quite a lot of it. Although most of it is generally on fire with people being killed a lot of the time. This is not a happy banger. <laughs> a lot of bad things happen and atrocities happen. It's, it's pretty grim stuff. People get ripped apart and it, it's just a bit of a bad time. It's also very serious and you are, as a reader, expected to take it seriously as well. There aren't any light moments, there's no comedic relief. You kind of have to invest that this is like a serious fictional work and you kind of have to like put yourself into it just a little bit. This review is actually a lot harder to do than what I thought it would be. I'm reading it and I was enjoying it so much. I have all these ideas in my head on what I want to say and now I'm trying to put it into words and it's, it's difficult because I don't know. It was such a cool experience to read and... It wasn't something I just ploughed through, I really took my time. It took me about a month, maybe even six weeks to read this thing. It isn't a beer manga, you don't just chug it down. This is like a fine wine. You've really got to take your time, read it in sections, digest it. It's, it's good, it's nice. So anyway, back to the story. To stop her village from being like destroyed, basically, she agrees to go off with the invaders to try and see what's going on and how to stop this war. She kind of agrees, she's like, I've got this hidden bit, if you agree to leave my people alone, I'll go with you and we can sort this out and have a treaty between us and hopefully no one gets killed. And that's kind of what Nausicaa does a lot of. She's always zooming out from a situation. What is the route that I can take where the least people are going to get killed? She always acts without hesitation and whether it means she's going to get hurt or not, she just jumps into it. But she isn't the kind of character who's like flawless, even though a lot of the characters in there do regard her as almost like a goddess kind of thing. Within the first 50 or 60 pages of volume 1, she's killed someone, she's tainted herself, she's soiled, she's dirty, and she's just as worthless as all of humanity. And as she needs to like wade through blood and mud 
to see what's going on and try and help someone she's going to do it she's not flawless and she's not under any kind of like assumption that she's kind of better than other people she's just trying to do the best thing and as i say yeah people do die and it's it's a horrible horrible time the other characters that from the movie that you might know you've got like yupa who's essentially snufkin but with swords <laughs> And he's a really influential character in the manga. And also Princess Kashana. They're like the main three ones that kind of last throughout the entire manga. There are other characters. You don't really see some of the bad guys until the second half. And none of those guys are in the film. So there's, there's a lot in the manga that you really don't get to see if you just stick with the anime. Another thing that's really cool is like the artwork. And it's going to sound like a ridiculous thing to say. But it looks very hand-drawn. This is a handcrafted work throughout. This isn't my, oh, I've done some flashy outlines and then I pass it to my assistants. This is, I've drawn this thing. Every single panel is basically a miniature work of art. You could put any of this stuff on the wall and people be like, oh, that's really cool. There is a lot of to and fro. There's a lot of traveling around and a lot of people bumping into each other while they're en route in the sky. And they're just like, oh, who's that? Where are they going? Oh, what's that smoke over there? What's exploded? And they just kind of explore the world and try to work out what's going on. And then you get atrocities which i mentioned before you get these giant worms called the omu and they just like destroy the place but they have their own motivations everybody is like a fully fleshed out character even the creatures that can't really speak properly it's not like everybody's like a good guy or a bad guy everybody has their own set of motivations so princess kashana for example she kind of shows up and everyone thinks she's like a super bad guy but also she's in a situation she has responsibilities to her people She's in a social situation where if she makes a mistake, her brothers are going to kill her, or her father's going to get her assassinated. And everybody is just trying to do the best they can. But eventually, as these kinds of characters come into contact with Nausicaa, they realise that having a war is bad. But again, zoom it out a bit. It doesn't matter if you have a war, if the world's going to end. You know? And there are select people who do realise this. And eventually, over time, all these people come together for the sake of Nausicaa and what she's trying to do. She isn't flawless or perfect, but she doesn't allow herself to stop, and she just keeps pushing forward, and people kind of respect her because of her actions and what she does with herself. There's like this legend that like, the person in blue is going to come and save the world, and she does turn into the person with blue, but the blue is actually blood, and her complete attire is covered and that is how she kind of earns her stripes, by wading through the worst of situations. And as the manga progresses and you've met all of the people that there are to me, it does come back to the original idea of that there's this ultimate monstrous kind of weapon that is going to destroy the world. And it is a monstrous weapon. You do see it in the movie, but in the manga it's kind of something that it has its own motivations as well. And if you're going to be cynical about it, it is a big giant Evangelion. <laughs> and if you want to look up the relationship between Miyazaki and Hideaki Anno, there's, there's crossover. There's, there's reason to call it like that. I really enjoyed it on quite a fundamental level, personally to me. It really took me off guard. It was a lot better than what I thought it was going to be. I didn't really know what to expect. I know what Miyazaki's artwork is like. But this is the only manga he's done in proper long form in this way. And it's, it's such a special thing. There will be people out there who don't really like it. They might find it a little bit boring. They might find it a little bit too po-faced or something like that. But if you're willing to give it a little bit of like effort on your part, a little bit of your time, you shall reap the rewards. It, it really took me off guard. It really did impress me. And honestly, when people start making their best top 10 manga and all this kind of stuff, I really got to think long and hard whether it should be on there because it probably is. It, it really, really <laughs> impressed me. I really don't know how this review's turned out. Once I edit it, I'm going to try hopefully edit it so it makes a little bit of sense. But if you want a big, ginormous, epic, grand scale, kind of depressing at times manga about what's, it's, what's going to destroy the world first. Is it nature or is it humanity itself? And how could you move forward from that? And it's, it's just a grim time. There's a lot of fighting and a lot of people getting killed. Of Miyazaki's other stuff, maybe Princess Mononoke kind of comes closer. But we're talking massive death and destruction. 
And that's it really, go check out something that's completely different to most other things you've read within like manga. It might be similar to some of the stuff like Mobius has put out, something like this. I'm not that well versed in French comics to know much about that kind of stuff, but honestly, this is, this is hot stuff. And if you're happy to give this weapon of a thing space on your shelf, it's, it's more than deserving, it's excellent. But yeah, that's now's the the Valley of the Wind. I don't know what this mess of a review was. It was really good. Just go and get it if you trust my tastes. <laughs> okay, this is the show signing off, and hopefully I will see you next time.